I'm Dave DeForest reporting at Environmental Summit to get underway. About 150 world leaders are expected to attend Monday's start of the United Nations Climate Summit. The goal of the summit is to limit average global warming to 2 degrees Celsius, perhaps less compared to pre-industrial revolution levels. Hundreds of thousands of protesters on Sunday called for the adoption of worldwide environmental controls. The protests in Paris turned violent with police firing tear gas and detaining about 200 demonstrators. Syrian activists say airstrikes strikes believed to be from Russian planes killed at least 18 people and wounded 40 in northern Syria. The strike is reported to have hit a busy marketplace. The Britain-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said the strikes happened in the town of Ariha. The European Union Sunday agreed to a $3.2 billion aid package to help Turkey deal with the current migration crisis. The agreement came at a meeting in Brussels. Donald Tusk is the president of the European Council. We, the European Union, will strengthen our support to refugees in Turkey and the region, stem irregular uh, migration, work on returns, increase our support to visa liberalization and crack down together on the criminal smugglers' networks. The largest group of Syrian migrants arriving in Europe this year have passed through Turkey on their way to Greece or Bulgaria. Pope Francis is calling on warring parties in the Central African Republic to lay down their weapons and support efforts to end sectarian strife. The Pope arrived in the CAR capital of Bangui Sunday to promote peace and coexistence. This is VOA News. Israel has suspended diplomatic contact with the European Union related to the Israeli-Palestinian peace process. The action is being taken to protest an EU move to label products manufactured in Israeli settlements in the West Bank and other Israeli so-called occupied territories. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced the move Sunday, saying contacts with EU bodies and their representatives will remain suspended until his government completes a re-evaluation process. In Burkina Faso, counting is underway after voters went to the polls Sunday to elect their president and parliament. Fourteen candidates are vying to be the next president. Emily Iyab has this report. The three frontrunners are long-time opposition leader Zephyrin Diabre, former prime minister and Kampari stalwart turned dissident Rockmar Christian Caboret and lawyer Benny Wende Sankara. The results are expected to be tied with a good possibility of a second-round runoff. Turnout is expected to be high. Long lines of voter were observed in the capital city, Ouagadougou, even before polling stations opened. The Electoral Commission said it intends to announce the results sometime Monday. Emilia in Ouagadougou. The U.S. government has ended its bulk collection of data from telephone calls of millions of Americans. The move follows a controversy that erupted with the disclosure by former government contractor Edward Snowden of the secret collection program. The U.S. security agency will now employ more tightly targeted surveillance methods. Under the program that is now ending, the government collected information about phone calls, including their duration and the phone numbers involved, but the actual content of the calls was not monitored, recorded, or collected. Turkey said Sunday it is returning the body of a pilot who died after parachuting out of a Russian jet that was shot down by Turkish forces last week. Prime Minister Ahmet Davutoglu said the body was taken to Turkey late Saturday and was being treated according to Eastern Orthodox tradition. Thousands of people have gathered in Turkey for the funeral of prominent pro-Kurdish lawyer and human rights activist Tahir Elche 
Elche was killed on Saturday during a gun battle between Kurdish rebels and security forces in the southeastern city of Dayarbakar. Uh, two policemen were also killed in the violence. Leaders of Afghanistan and Pakistan are expected to hold an ice-breaking meeting on the margins of the UN Climate Change Summit that starts Monday in Paris. Pakistani officials and a group of senior Pashtun nationalist leaders say Afghan President Ashraf Ghani has agreed to meet with Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif in Paris.